in this video, in this video, I want to talk to you about observational drawing. So far, we have done blind contour, where we don't look at the paper at all, and modified contour, where we can look at the paper for one second for every five seconds we look at our object. In observational drawing, you should still be looking at your object more than you look at your paper, but there's no limit on how much you look at your paper. The big thing here to remember is that you should be drawing the object that's actually in front of you instead of the one that's in your head. For example, we all know what our shoes look like. We probably have that favorite pair of shoes we wear all the time. And if someone asked me what my shoes looked like, I could tell you so much about them. And I could draw them, and I could do a pretty good drawing of my shoe. But if I were to take my actual shoe and put it next to my drawing, there would be some pretty huge differences between them. I'm asking you to actually look at your shoe, not think about your shoe and draw what you think it looks like, because I can promise you that you're wrong. Observational drawing is all about the details. The more detail you add, the more realistic it's going to look, and really, the better it's going to look. You need to be sure when you're doing observational drawing that you are drawing 3D objects, not 2D objects. Here are a few tips to help you do that. If I'm drawing something that has a circular top or bottom, I'm going to use an ellipse. So I can put my base just off to the side there. Now, if I were drawing something 2D, I could go like this. And this would be my base. But that's wrong. That doesn't look like it has form. It doesn't look three-dimensional. Instead, I need to use ellipses for the top and the bottom of my face. Ellipse is a circle when it's in perspective. Now, 3D objects also have thickness. So in this case, I would use a second ellipse on the inside to show the thickness of my vase. So if you give me this, I'm a happy camper. If you go in and you add a few reflections where you see them, I am just thrilled. I am jumping for joy. When you have an object that's a square, such as the stapler. It doesn't have any round edges or ellipses. I need to make sure I am drawing more than one side of my stapler. I need to show that it exists within a realm of space. Like so. So you can get the idea here. I can see more than one side of my stapler happening. I'm going to do a quick observational drawing just to give you one more example of these headphones. Just like always, you should put your object off to the side in front of you so you can see it while you draw. Pick a place to start. And still, my eye is following the motion of my hand. Now, 
and I'm really taking my time here. And I need to get in all of the small details I can find. So if there is a bit of an edge here, I need to draw it. If there is a bit of fabric puffering, I need to draw it. All of these little details need to make it in. I'm going to quickly finish up just part of my drawing here for you because I don't think you need to sit and watch me draw for 10 minutes. But that is how long your drawing should take. If they take 10 minutes, if they take 20 minutes, good, that's the goal. The longer, the better, please. All right, I'm going to leave it off here. But look at this level of detail. And I can still go back and do some more. There's still more detail that I haven't gotten in here yet. This is a long process. And I look forward to seeing what you all come up with. Thanks for watching.